Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so I've got a review for you today. We're going to be taking a look at these pearlescent watercolours by Fintech. You're probably thinking, what on earth am I doing buying paints like that? Surely I'm not going to use these for landscape painting. And you're absolutely right, I wouldn't dream of using these um, in landscapes. So why did I buy them then? Well, the reason is, um, some of you will probably remember this project I'd done a while ago. Um, where I painted you know all of the British butterflies in my sketchbook and some of them not all of them but some of them have a really nice metallic sheen on them and it was really hard well in fact it was impossible um, to get that sheen with just regular watercolors and colored pencils I did try the, the Derwent metallics on them sorry Derwent metallic pencils on them um, they just weren't right so I've been looking for something which is going to give me more of a realistic look to the butterflies and not just a flat matte um, look to them. So eventually I found these. I've done a little bit of searching around to see what I could find and these seemed like quite a good option although they might be a little bit too much, a little bit outrageous. Some of the, some of the colours in here, um, well not so much the colours but the effects uh, is very strong. They are, I mean it says pearlescent on there but they are very metallic. Um, very shiny indeed but I have found ways to sort of overcome that and managed to use these for um, I'll just show you another sketchbook now just bring that in yeah so I've found a few ways to kind of make them work you can kind of see the effects of them there look kind of shimmer a little bit in the light this is a project I've got going on at the minute um, and all of this will be on patreon for those that are interested so that's the reason that I bought them. Okay, so now let's take a look at the colours and the paints and uh, let's, let's see what they're like. First of all, they come in a really nice um, metal tin with fine tech pearlescent colours on there and you get 12 colours in a set and you can see straight away just looking at the pans look, they're really shiny, very metallic looking. It's quite a nice set though because These pans lift out and just clip in. I don't know if you can see that's like a circular raised plastic area there, and they just clip straight into the palette like that. So that's really sort of handy. And there's probably the equivalent of a whole pan um, in quantity of paint there. If I just get one of my regular whole pans and we just compare the size automatically these look wider don't they but when you turn them on their side you can see that um, a regular hole pan there is a lot deeper more or less the same length um, but it's a lot deeper so I think it more or less equates to about the same quantity of paints that you're getting there um, and for a set of 12 paints uh, in this tin I actually paid 31 pounds for this set um, some of you will know what these are and you'll be looking at this thinking, hang on a minute, they're square, usually they're round. Well that's right, the old ones used to be round, but these newer ones now uh, are square, they're making them square. So these are the latest ones. Um, in the old set, you did get round pans that clipped in and out, and you also got like a, a moulded plastic palette uh, with moulded circular dishes in it where the paints were just poured into those and you couldn't take them out. Uh, personally I think this is a much better system doing it this way. Now I've already done a little swatch of them um, and you can see when I tilt that in the light look they're quite quite metallic and shiny looking. There's a couple of very funny colours in there uh, the first one being this black. Now <laughs> I don't really understand the purpose of it because this is supposed to be a pearlescent or metallic set of paints and when I tilt that in the light look you can see that the black does nothing it's just like well it's, it's actually not very nice black at all if I get it close you can see the unevenness and the granulation in that so I really don't understand why that's in the set maybe it's there to use as an undercoat uh, or an underlayer to put the metallics on because as you can see um, the effect of them is a lot better when you paint them over black you know the colors are a lot more a lot more intense there and the other colour there is this one. It actually looks um, green in the pan. 
but it's called Mystic Colour and it's this one here on the swatch and as you can see when I hold it there look this looks sort of a, a warm sort of earthy brown and the top looks like a, a metallic olive green but when you tilt it in the light kind of all goes to that kind of shimmery green tilt it back again and it's it's like a two-tone brown and green um, can't really think of a use for that so I think eventually I'm going to get rid of these two colours and replace them with something a lot nicer but anyway that's that's the colours there and as soon as I swatched them out I thought oh dear they're a little bit too blingy aren't they a little bit too sparkly so what I done was I, I went searching again on the internet because after I had a little practice with these I thought what would be good is if I could find the medium, the binding medium and um, what they're using for these paints just a clear version of it so that I could actually use it as a glaze over the top of regular watercolours because some of these colours aren't very good for butterflies some of them are perfect, one or two of them are actually quite good but the majority of them um, even when you mix them you know they're not they're not brilliant so I thought it'd be a lot easier if I could just mix my own colours from my regular watercolours and then just lightly glaze over them with some sort of glazing medium some pearlescent glazing medium of some sort and after a little bit of searching um, I found this it's um, iridescent medium by Winsor & Newton and <laughs> How, how do I say this? Well, it's more like glitter glue than a pearlescent finish. And you can actually see like little bits of glitter in this. So, I mean, this is ideal for things like Christmas tree decorations and that kind of thing, Christmas cards. Um, but it really wasn't what I was looking for at all. I mean, all of this is new to me. You know, I've never bought anything like this before. So if there's anybody out there um, that's used to this kind of thing, maybe some crafters or something are watching, and they know exactly what I'm talking about you know trying to find um, a nice medium to glaze over regular watercolours with if you've found anything uh, that sounds like what I'm looking for please let me know because um, I'd be really interested to uh, take a look at that so like I say this one was just too sparkly it's just like glitter mixed in with glue so it was back to these again and I had to make these work because I haven't got anything else um, to use at the minute so I have found a few ways of sort of overcoming um, you know the amount of shine because some of them are just too much but the trouble is the more water you mix in with them or the more paint you mix in with them um, you know the more of a, a duller look you get but it seems to be almost like an on off switch there's no sort of middle area whereas you can dilute them just enough just to get like a low sheen with them it seems to be a little bit all or nothing so the, you know they're very hard to mix and get them to look right so I've made a, a quick video, uh, a speed paint if you like, um, of this top butterfly here, well actually it's a moth funnily enough, um, and I'll play that now and we'll just talk about how these paints perform, okay? So for the first wash um, I'm using a combination of the fine tech paints and regular watercolours. I'm trying to get a nice sort of um, metallic green colour for the upper wings on the moth. Um, the fine tech colour isn't anywhere near the right colour whatsoever so I'm having to use some hooker's green and some lemon yellow now this is the problem, this is always the trade off with these paints the more um, regular watercolour you mix in with them or just the more water you mix in with them means the less pearlescent effects that you're going to get now one of the best ways I've found to use these watercolours is to use your regular watercolours as the initial wash and get the colour exactly as you want it and then use the nearest colour that you've got on the palette so for example in this case here um, I use green on the upper wings there and then you can glaze with the green from the fine tech colours now if the green is too dark you automatically want to water it down um, you can water it down and it's best to water it down a little bit but again it's that trade off with how much pearlescent effect you want and how much coverage do you want with the paint so I used silver actually and in fact I used gold as well I used gold as the yellow and silver was sort of like a white that tended to lighten the colours up so mixing gold and silver in with the green 
you know, the gold acted as the yellow, the silver acted as a white, and then adding more water, it wasn't affected too much, and it did work out um, to produce a nice glaze over the top of the regular watercolour. And something else worth bearing in mind as well, if you use these watercolours, um, they're no good at all for wet into wet painting. Um, if you apply um, even a light wash of them onto wet paper, the colour just doesn't run out at all. It basically just stays where it is. It might go just a little bit soft around the edges, but generally, you know, if you want a nice blended look to the paint, you have to do that with a brush. And if the paint does dry with a hard edge, um, they re-wet really easily on the paper. So just a clean damp brush and you can work the edges of the paint really easily and just soften them a little bit, um, which is always useful because like I say, um, you know, even on really wet paper, um, with a lot of paint. It just stays in one spot. It really doesn't um, diffuse out into the wet paper at all. But all in all, I think they're you know nice paints to use, but not for large areas. I think they're ideal for this kind of thing. Um, you know, like I say, as long as you're not using them for wet into wet or anything like that. Okay, so we're just about finished there now. Um, the colours we use very sparingly there. Um, but just enough just to get a little bit um, of a pearlescent sheen you can't actually see it there in the finished picture because I need to kind of tilt it around a bit and make the light catch it from different angles um, but the colours themselves look fairly realistic and I was quite pleased with the results okay so I just want to show you what the paints do in real time so I've got a little off cut of watercolour paper here and I'm just going to mix up one of the colours. I just want to show you how it performs, you know, wet into wet and on dry paper, all that kind of thing. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you get these paints is they don't, um, they don't dissolve very easily in the pan. You have to kind of pre-wet them a little bit first and uh, just work at it a little bit. But the colours are quite, quite strong, as you, you know, as you can see from the, uh, the swatches there. But I think um, the reason for that is, obviously there's mica in there, which is giving it that pearlescent and sort of metallic look. And I think they need, you know, a fairly strong binder to kind of hold that all together. Okay, so that's, that's fairly strong and neat um, from the pan. Now you'll notice, um, when you're applying this you're going to get a lot of brush marks like I say it doesn't really run out you know like regular watercolor does you know to get a nice smooth lay down of this you really have to go over it with the brush and keep smoothing it out um, or you're going to get brush lines it sounds like I'm being very negative about this I'm really not um, I really do like these paints actually um, I mean they're great fun aren't they And now if we add a little bit of water to that, you can see it's not really performing like regular watercolour. You know, regular watercolour would kind of diffuse out a lot a lot more even than that. And this is kind of, you know, leaving us a lot of brush lines there. And you'll probably see as well, uh, you know, with the amount of water that I'm putting on there, that when that dries, there'll be no shine on that at all. Okay, I'll do a, a large wet into wet area now. So I'll just wet this section here. Okay, and then we use the same colour. I'll just bring this a little bit closer for you. Now we will get a soft edge when we put this on. I mean that paper is. Um, you know, very wet. But if that was, you know, regular watercolour, we wouldn't be getting such a hard edge as that. It would kind of burst out into the wet paper a lot more. So, I mean, that's a good thing or a bad thing, you know, depending on what you want to do with it. But like I say, you will get um, a lot of brush marks in there and you'll need to you know address that before you let it dry out like you see just here look you know it's, it's quite hard paint to use on large areas because of the mica that's in it it's just like you're spreading it around the paper um, you know in lumps and streaks and lines and things like that 
and it's quite hard to get a really nice smooth even lay down so for small areas like um, butterflies moths that kind of thing you know these are ideal you've just got to look at them like um, you know they're not regular watercolors they don't behave like regular watercolors at all and that's not a bad thing it's like I say it probably sounds like I've been very negative about this but um, on the contrary you know I'm very positive about these paints but just don't get your expectations up thinking that they're going to perform you know like your regular watercolors because they're really not you know it's, it's a similar effect but um, I'm sure it's something to do with the amount of mica in there you know that's causing that weight in the water and it's kind of just pushing the paint straight into the paper and you know not allowing it to kind of sit on top and float around in the water and get all those nice soft effects so as you can see as that's drying out it's still a little bit wet um, but this area just here you know that's really nice and pearlescent but you know as soon as you start adding a lot of water in there a lot of the shine goes but like I was saying um, you know in the speed paint there if you apply your regular watercolors first as the initial wash and then apply this as thick as you can without it changing the color of the initial wash um, but just thin enough to allow your initial wash to show through it's it's a bit of a balancing act but if you can get that right you can glaze over your regular watercolors with the nearest color that you've got in the fine tech paints and get quite a nice shimmer and get a, a, you know a nice realistic color because one of the problems I had with this green I just couldn't get it to match the wings on that butterfly at all so by using um, a combination of hooker's green and lemon yellow from my regular palette and then glazing over it with that with a little bit of gold a little bit of silver in there I find that the silver and the gold colors look just generally more metallic and some of these others they're okay but I don't think they shine quite as much so by adding a little bit more of the more metallic colors into there particularly if you're going to dilute it you'll still retain that pearlescent effect now as for light fastness I haven't got a clue there's nothing at all um, indicated anywhere on the box um, we've got the color swatches there and the color names and that's as much information as I got I didn't get any leaflet with it or anything um, so there's no indication whatsoever about light fastness and in all honesty I'm not too bothered because the way I'm going to use them um, is going to be in a sketchbook anyway so they're not going to be exposed to sunlight on a regular basis so I'm really not concerned about light fastness at all and one other thing I should mention as well um, I can't remember exactly how many colors there are in the range I think there's something like 40 colors so you can um, you know replace these pans if they run out and you can get you know alternative colors if you want to and it's like I mentioned earlier I'm definitely going to be replacing the black and that mystic green or mystic color or whatever it's called so all in all I'm very pleased with them um, I've enjoyed using them and I've still got more sort of metallic and pearlescent butterflies and moths to paint and I shall certainly be using these um, unless of course I can find a clear glaze medium which would probably work out even better but at the minute this is the best I can find and I'm really glad I bought them because they do work out well but like I say you've got to get used to them they're not like regular watercolors you've really got to have a good practice with these um, and familiarize yourself with them you know and, and the mixing issues and all that kind of stuff okay so I hope that was helpful to you um, I'll leave product links in the description below if you're interested in these and like I say you know if you know of any sort of clear glazing medium um, which is you know a very similar effect to these please let me know leave your comments below and I'd love to hear from you and I'd love to hear just your thoughts on these as well okay so I'll leave the video there and I'll see you in the next one take care everybody Bye for now.